I said, I'm in love with this place and I'm here for the long haul. I didn't know how long that haul would be at that point, but, but it was clear to me that I had found a community and an environment that allowed me to stop fighting against systems and to begin participating in creating and being part of the creation of a system. One of the things that was really new to me at ACS was that there was no real discipline per se, as far as I could tell. So a you know, traditional school has a detention. They have, um, if the student isn't uh, cooperating, there's, I mean, some schools you can write a pass and send them to the principal. And um, not that I even did that. I mean, after my first year of teaching, I didn't send people to the principal. But the thing is, there were no avenues for discipline. And so it seems like kids were doing things and just kind of getting away with it. And I was really surprised that kids could run in the hall or sort of be rude on occasion. And it seemed like, how are they being kept in check? And I, I didn't understand. I, I thought it seemed like chaos to me. And then what I started to realize was that while well, okay, a student isn't specifically punished for cursing or for saying something inappropriate, um, being late. We have this system where we have committees that deal with it, meetings with family group leaders, and the idea is to teach them how to behave correctly rather than having them behave correctly because they're afraid of being punished. Instead, I think students sort of learn, by the time they get to ninth and 10th grade, they've learned how they should behave. And they've, they've learned it rather than they've been forced to behave in a certain way. I very clearly remember my very first days when I, when I came here. In fact, in the very beginning, I was surprised. I was taken aback by some of the attitudes around here. It was totally what I was not ever used to. Having gone to mainstream school and all that, you know, traditional stuff, the alternative approach was brand new to me. It took me a little while to actually get assimilated to what happens here. Um, I was distressed in the beginning at some of the, some of the disrespect the kids were showing to the staff, to Dr. Dave in particular. I remember one really horrid experience. Uh, you know, the kid was swearing at him, and I couldn't understand his response. He was very passive. He just sort of accepted this kid's abuse. My gut response was, you know, swear back at the kid or reach out and slap him. You know, why are you standing there taking this abuse? That was my very first valuable lesson, was watching Dr. Dave take that young man's abuse, allow him to walk away unchallenged. The next day, I was fortunate enough to be with Dave when this same student came and apologized and felt really badly about the way he treated Dave. Uh, I think that student learned more lifelong lesson from that experience than if Dave had taken some other approach and had been you know, reactionary. That, and that was early on. I was only like a week or two in the building. That was a valuable lesson for me early on. I, I started to sort of get a taste of the flavor of the way things operate around here. My first day of principal was just with all new students. Our first day of school every year, it's all sixth graders and any new students entering the school. And I remember telling them a story as I, I'm prone to do, but also explaining that we're, we're entering into this new school together. It's my first day as it is their first day. And I still feel very connected to the um, first group of students that showed up here the first day. I felt, you know, these are my, you know, we're entering into something new together. And uh, next year will be uh, my seventh year, and it's a seven year journey for students here. Um, just a significant time to grow up with uh, students and, and see them. So I feel more and more connected and closer and closer with students each year I'm here. But next year will have some, you know, special significance because it'll be my first generation of, of students that have been part of the school with me as the principal. I walked in, and we were all gathering in the gym, and I remember my guide was Lily, and she was awesome. And we went around to all the classrooms and the gym and the everywhere and she gave us this really good tour. And then we had lunch, and at the end of the day, we all gathered by the amphitheater, and we played games, and it was really great. I felt like it was a community, and I felt like I really belonged there. 
Uh, I remember feeling really grown up because we had periods instead of like class and then music and and we called them classes and I remember being thrilled that we could take whatever we wanted. Well, we had requirements, but we didn't, we could take uh, very specialized courses. I remember being in class for two periods and like just thinking that, gee, like I was so close to being in college and like I was so grown up and like this is what college students get to do. And it was fun. I can't emphasize enough how much alternative education is so crucial to just a general, um, I guess, understanding of what education can be versus, I, w I hated school. I was not a good student. Um, I, you know, I joke now because Louis Six had me um, his first year of teaching at the high school, ninth grade algebra, and I failed. Um, Nick Boyer, who subbed here who for a semester while Karen was gone, was in seventh grade and he was teaching me ninth grade algebra. Like, but the opportunity that I realized that education is as far as you want to take it or how you want to take it, I learned at ACS. I knew it was an alternative school, but I didn't know what that meant, you know, when I went there. But it was just a feeling of, I want to be here, and this is what I got from the kids. Uh, I have a voice here and I'm a part of what's going on here. I thought, I want to be a part of that. That's kind of cool. I would say that the counselors that I know would say that they love some of the kids. I think they love the kids that they have the ability to become close to. I think that just the way the other schools are set up um, and the number of kids that they need to work with and the types of duties that they have to do with the kids, um, they just don't have the opportunity to spend the same amount of time with the students. I certainly think that they got into this position, you know, that they chose these jobs, most of them, because they wanted to make a difference in kids' lives, and that it's really painful for them to be spending so much time working on their computers and doing the kinds of things they have to do instead of being able to really be there, you know, on a personal level. What you see here at LACS, I think, is th there's an expectation that everyone is pretty much a part of this relationship building process. In Ithaca High School, I don't know that there's a systemic e expectation, it's a structural expectation, but what you have are people who pretty much say, I don't need that to go beyond the call of duty to help, to help students be successful. So the commitment is there. When I first arrived at Ithaca High School, they had homerooms. LACS has family groups. After a few years, I left Ithaca High to go spend some time at another school. And when I returned, the homerooms were discontinued under that particular leadership. Um, I felt that was a loss. I felt that we lost an opportunity where teachers could have more of a formal structure so that they can um, do certain things with students, spend a few extra minutes each day with students. Um, but the system at the time said this was not the route that, that, that they felt was necessary. Um, as with LACS, it's built in the day. It's built in the day. So, okay, the structure is different. But is the commitment any greater? I'm not convinced of that. Are the re relationships any stronger? I'm not convinced of that at this point. There are not many schools wherein a student would come to a teacher and say, Dan, can I spend some time with you today? I have something pretty urgent I need to ask you. And when we finally got together and closed the door and were alone, he looked me in the eye and he said, I'm gonna ask you a question and I trust you to answer it honestly. And I was, you know, my heart was beating, I remember. And he said, as he looked in my eyes, am I smart? And I love that. That's a question that we all ask, but I think it's rare that there's a school that allows for relationships where questions like that can actually be asked out loud. 
Um, and I think that speaks to that connection.